views of lawnmowers, tractors, things like that. Hope you'll head on over there and check it out and support the channel there. Now, I got this. This is the Autofix D1 Pro S. This thing is a professional level diagnostic tool. If you have watched my video on the uh, Autofix light that I did, like it was a really nice scan tool, really surprising. Used the same software as Autel, and this is kind of the Autel light brand, I guess. I'm not sure what. They're definitely related, much like uh, Launch and King Bolin are related. Autofix and Autel are related. Uh, this is their like high-end tool, their top-of-the-line tool. So we're going to take a look at it. I was really pleased with the other Autofix scan tool, so I don't think there'll be any big surprises here. But we're going to dig into it. We'll hook it up to a car, and we will run through the paces with it, and hopefully we'll be just as happy with this one as we were with the little one. Let's do it. First of all, let's go ahead and unbox this thing, and what we're going to see here, hopefully, and she's a big one now. The other one had an 8-inch screen. I'm guessing this one's got to be a 10. And here's the box for it, a nice hard covered case for that. Nice case, auto fix. And then uh, we'll go ahead, pull the camera closer in, we'll get a good up close look at this. I'm do the tabs here, open it up. And here's our main unit. It is a, I believe that's a 10 inch screen for sure. Very thin, like a tablet-esque thin, which is nice. Does have a camera with a flash. A lot of these have, either don't have a camera or they have a camera, but they don't have a flash. Nice to see this has it all. Sides are pretty much void of anything, so is the bottom, but the top is where business at. Power button, and these are protected. Uh, Bluetooth and an SD card. That's interesting, an earphone jack. You don't see that on these very often. Two USB-C ports and a DC 12 volt in, so it has a regular charging port. That's really interesting. I'm, I imagine it probably also charges off of um, the USB-C, but I'm not positive. We'll have to find that out. Also, I do see it does have a front camera as well, which is really nice. So this is a pretty significantly cool looking tablet. Packing list here, USB to Earthnet adapter, so it does offer some programming capabilities. USB-C cable, main unit, the V1 dongle, and uh, the carrying case, right? So there we do have a manual here. It looks like a screen cleaner as well, which is nice to throw that in there. I appreciate them doing that. Manual, let's see here. All right. This goes through some of the stuff that it has, some of the stuff that it doesn't have. Connections. Oh, okay, so we're only looking at uh, a two page just startup guide basically. This is just in multiple languages here, just to let people know. So, pro level tool, pro level experience required. All right, here we have our Autofix Bluetooth powered OBD2 connector. Check this out. Snap-on has that. It's about the only thing I like about modern Snap-on tools. Our $16,000 waste of money Zeus has that feature. It is nice when you're trying to figure out where to plug that in. And it looks like in order to charge that, you can either charge basically off of OBD2, but it also has a USB-C cable as well. Up here in the top, we have our accessories. And uh, that would be our USB to USB-C cable. Here is our power cable, right? It does have a 12-volt uh, power cable, which is nice. And then our Ethernet to USB-C connector as well. Oh, wow, it's a port too. That's nice. So USB-C, three USB 3.0 adapters for regular size USB and a LAN Ethernet card. That is really nice. And then on this side, Room for, room for stuff to grow, so really nice there. Okay, close this up, get this out of the way. And we're ready to take a look at this. Now, it does not have a kickstand. Uh, it's the only thing that I can see on this so far that I'm wishing it had and it doesn't. But we'll go ahead and power this thing up. Auto fix, here it comes. I'll zoom in the camera a little bit. So it does have an unlocked file system, which is really nice. So you can add apps. The fact that this has front and rear cameras with flashes, 
that's cool. Let's do that. Let's use that. And uh, yeah, I'm liking it. So let's take a look at that system here. Um, right, so we have printing stuff, voice recorder. It does have a media player already built in, screen recorder built in, a photo gallery, camera. Let's take a look at the camera and see what the specs are on the camera. Let's go into settings here. Resolution 8 megapixels. It is a 4K camera, 4x3. Nice. And uh, wow, okay. So we can change that to 4 megapixels or 1 megapixel, which is 1080p. Nicely done, dude. Okay, I'm really happy with that. And then we also have video as well. Let's see what kind of, uh, on the video, let's see what we got. We'll get into settings on that. Video quality 1080p, 264 or 720p on the video. So nice on that as well. We'll stick with that. And we have some, some stuff as well here you can get into on the settings. Appreciate it when they do stuff like that and give us all the goodies does have Adobe PDF reader built in, calendar, calculator, and clock. Email browser is in there as well, and a couple other things. Like These are the tools that are going to go directly with Autofix's stuff, but let's take a look at the settings and see what kind of a system we have here. DS1 Pro, it is an 8-core, 2.4 gigahertz, so this thing is smoking fast, like definitely fast. Nice, okay. Let's see what kind of storage we have. Well, we can take a look at the system. This is... Uh, I'm wondering if it tells us what Android system we have here. We have 82 gig of free storage space, so probably a 128 gig system. Nicely done, man. I'm digging it. All right, let's get out of that. Okay, so obviously we can get in there, go to the Play Store, download a bunch of stuff, and we can we can be in business with that. Uh, beyond that, let's get into Odofix's actual software here, and I think you're going to like this. All right, we're in it. Hey, Diagnostics. If this looks familiar to you, it should, because this is Autel. I mean, this is their software. This is exactly the layout you're going to have with an Autel tool. In fact, I mean, literally Autel user center. So they're uh, the folks at Autofix are just building their tablets or to their specs, but using Auto, uh, Autel's work, you know, Auto, Autel software, I should say. Diagnostics, obviously, service. I mean, it's going to be full featured. All right, well, check it out on this. We got uh, key programming, steering angle sensors, everything you would want. I mean, look at that, transport mode, rain light sensor programming, water pump start stop, speed and PTO, trans adapt, airbag reset. Uh, look at this stuff. Just continuously impresses me with the amount of stuff that we can now modify on vehicles. Full featured, full featured. All right, uh, settings for the actual unit. We can go metric, we can go imperial, printer settings, language reports, auto updates, vehicle list, battery test, laws and regulations, system settings, and about... Data manager, of course, is there. VCI manager, how many of these? If you lose one, you can always program a second one. I recommend not losing it. Battery test, if you have that. Let's get into tools and let's see what we got here. So monitor, data logging, VCI settings, all that's available. And then we have update, data manager, remote desktop. That is if you run into an issue that you need help on, you can go ahead and get that help. Support, which is like uh, cloud-based support from other users. Maxi view, max video. I mean, the list is pretty big here. <laughs> An Autel user center. Really nice, fully, um, fully decked out, I would say. And access to the internet. I don't have, I don't have the internet hooked up yet. I haven't like, uh, I haven't entered in my code for that. I guess. Uh, to back button, right? We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. We have photos, we have volume and brightness control. We're gonna turn the brightness all the way up just to help with recording today. And there we go, there we go. So I guess I will pause the camera, we'll head on out to a car and let's go through the stuff it can do. Let's do it. Okay, well, like I plugged it in and immediately found Toyota and I went ahead and selected that. Now it's asking me, do I wanna do an auto VIN? And I do, so I'm gonna click that. And we'll go ahead and read that. There we go. It is laser cruise on this model. It does have vehicle stability control on this model and it does have a memory seat on this car, so we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead on this one. We're gonna do an auto scan and see what comes up. And we'll do a full scan of all the systems. And she is rolling through it quick. That eight core processor is definitely helping in the situation here. Wow. Yeah, it's just blowing through them all.
Awesome. That took about 20 seconds start to finish to get through all those systems. That's really nice. It is showing that I do have some bad tire pressure sensors. I'm going to make a separate video on how to repair tire pressure sensors, how to replace and reprogram. However, in this video, we're going to get into this stuff, and you can see everything else is beautiful. Now, we can do a report on this, and, uh, you know, you can switch from kilometers to miles, and we can enter it in. I think this is 79550, and we'll go ahead and hit OK. And what we got here is, there you go, 2010 Toyota Sienna. It's got all the doodads. Oh, a total of 17 systems have been checked. One has a fault with a number of five. That's not good, right? If that was engine, I'd be concerned, or definitely transmission. But when it comes to tire pressure transponders, that is the nanny state working with us right there. So I don't care about any of that stuff. We'll back out of that for right now. And let's go, if you want to get into a subsystem, a subsystem, like let's get into engines, ECU, right? We're going to get in there and we'll see what we got. If this is looking familiar, it ought to be. <laughs> it is literally... Uh, you know, Autel's, Autel's goodies. Um, active test, I've got the car running right now, so we can't actually run any of these, but injection volume, air fuel sensor volume, uh, vacuum valve switches, fuel pump speed control. I mean, look at this stuff. Uh, idle cutout, cooling fan, starter relay, throttle control system. I mean, it's incredible here. Look at all the stuff that it can do. Transmission shift solenoids. So as far as active test, this bi-directional for sure and is able to get in there and do the things you want to do. Special functions, let's see what she's got. Brightness codes, check mode, EVAP system uh, manual check, throttle matching, oil light reset, reset all memory, don't do that, and VIN number read off. I think somebody was asking me, yeah, oh, I don't want to write a new one, let's skip that. And then air fuel. Cool. Let's take a look at live data. So we have misfire monitor. These are all the, the systems that are available. So we're going to go through. We'll pick a few of these and check to see how snappy she is when she's uh, when she comes on. Fuel system status. We're in closed loop. Calculated load. We can look at that one. You can see the temperature starting to rise. Short-term fuel trim on both banks here. Let's take a look at that. Engine speed. We'll take a look at that. And airflow sensor. Let's look at those. And we're going to say show selected. And here we are. Let me give it some gas. That is instantaneous, my friends, for sure. You can see everything reacting. And it has no problem chewing on, you know, those five things all at once. I remember a time in the not too distant past where anything more than two items and you'd have such a lag, it was awfully hard to tell what was going on. That's pretty cool. Um, we can do here, we can look at graphs. Well, I want to turn that back on, but I can press the down button here. Let me, let me reactivate that. I can turn that on. I can, I can show it in a different, right? I can also show engine speed the same way. But if I want to have it um, as a bar graph, or even like this. Same thing with all these, right? I want to see my short term. Now I'm monitoring both, but I'm actually monitoring all of them in different ways. So if you want one to be like this, and you want your calculated load to just stay that way. I mean, all these things can run at the same time. How about that, huh? Pretty awesome. All right, let's get out of that. The fact that, I mean, like, you couldn't do any of these things back in the day. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, let's go with... I think we're going to go with body. Let's see what we can find in the body system. I try to get into subsystems in these where, uh, you know, it's like regular scan tools won't go, if that makes sense. Let's see what kind of things we can do here. All right, trunk and back door open, wireless buzzer, hazard, security horn. We can uh, manually test the relay for the fog lamp, the headlight, the tail lamp, security, high beams. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. I can activate the horn. I better not do that. <laughs> but I could do a lot of other things. Well, I'll tell you what, we can do the hazards. That's not going to wake anybody up. We'll go with all data here. I should have left that to custom, but we'll take a look at everything anyway. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so hazard currently to off. I press that button there, and I turn that on. Using the scan tool, you can see there's the actual hazard button, but using the scan tool, I turn it back off. 
That, my friends, is what's called bi-directional control. And uh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. So we have some other functions in here. These are the other things that can happen. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. Door open warning. All kinds of goodies. All right, let's back out of that. Just to show you bi-directional controls are a real deal here. Um, what else do we want here? Let's back out of that. Let's take a look at special functions in the BCM. Wireless code clearing, wireless code registration, so I can uh, match up new wireless remotes. If you've lost all your keys, you can clear it out and then program new keys into the system. So that's all available on this as well. Pretty nice stuff. Then, of course, there is live data, although we were kind of just in that. In the case of BCMs, it's mostly on and off stuff. Yeah, so we got that. So not a, not a whole lot to look at in BCM but or body control module. Now, let's see. Let's see. What else we got here? Let's go with driver's seat and see what kind of weird stuff we got going into that. We'll enter into the driver's seat. Okay, what kind of active test do we have for our driver's seat? Oh, it's bringing us back into the BCM. These are... Um, these are linked, I guess. Okay, we'll get out of that again. What else is not linked? Let's see what else we can find here. Um, how about occupant detection? Let's go into that. Nope, I keep hitting. I keep hitting the wrong one. Hold on. We'll go into occupant detection here, and we'll go there. There we go. And you can see that I'll be sitting here. This is to activate and uh, deactivate airbags. You know, if there's no weight in the passenger seat, there's no sense in a crash for that airbag to deploy. It can save you money if you are in a minor wreck that does deploy airbags. So this is diagnostics for that. You can sense your range. I mean, this stuff gets into it. Total weight information, number of DCs present. It definitely gets in there. What kind of program can we do with that? So we can recalibrate. Then we can check the sensitivity on that. Let's see what else we got. Let's go back into that driver's seat. I, I think I pressed the wrong button before. And we'll look at what special functions are available there. Okay, so no special functions. All right, what kind of active test do we have for the driver's seat? Seat recline, front vertical operation, lift operation, and seat slide operation. We can, well, we don't need to see all the data, but we can do whatever, right? We can, we'll, we'll just, I don't even know what, M1 switch and M2 switch, I guess. We'll just do that, but it doesn't matter because we're not really looking. What I'm trying to do is activate the seat, and that's what we're going to find out. So do we want the front one to move forward? You stop. <laughs> and that's it. It works. <laughs> I love it. Well, I guess that'll do it. I really don't know what else to get into on this. It's bi-directional. Well, I guess we can look at live data fusion. I'm not sure what that is. And then our resets for this particular car, or I guess this is all cars here, but... Nice. If you want to verify that the car you bought doesn't have, hasn't been, you know, somebody hasn't altered the, the information, there's our VIN number. It's programmed not only into the car, but into the uh, ECM as well. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, I guess that'll do it. I don't really know what else to show you all on this. It's just, it's a great little tool that works. And obviously it's bi-directional. Obviously it's deep level bi-directional to get into, you know, seat motors and stuff like that. It's not, not a simple task. Cool. Well, I'll leave a link to where you can pick one of these things up, and I'll see you next time. Take care.